host the book launch of Once Upon a Time in India, a century of Indian cinema, authored by eminent film journalist and our member, Ms. Bhavna Samaya. It is especially an honor to welcome Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, an epitome of Indian cinema and a member at the club. Mr. Bachchan, as always, it's a pleasure to see you. I would like to congratulate Ms. Samaya and wish great success for the book, which we all eagerly wait to read. And a very good evening, all of you. Vishisht Atiti Gan, which is here, is a swagat. खास तौर पे आज के हमारे जो सबसे विशेष अतिथि हैं सरमिता बच्चन बहुत-बहुत स्वागत सर कुछ आदतें होती हैं हमारी जो लग जाएं एक बार तो छूटना बहुत मुश्किल होता है वो एक आदत मुंबई के वॉटसन होटल में लगी थी वो आदत कब चस्का बन गया कब हमारी जिंदगी का हिस्सा बन गया ये हमें समझ नहीं आया कुछ आ और कब वो छोटी सी आदत बड़ी होते होते सौ साल पुरानी आदत बन गई ये भी हमें पता नहीं चला तो वो एक सेलिब्रेशन है वो हिंदुस्तान की एक आदत है वो बनी रहेगी कितनी चीजें आई चली गई लेकिन ये एक ऐसी चीज है जिसके लिए आज भी हम हर फ्राइडे का इंतजार करते हैं हर फ्राइडे को लंबी लाइन में खड़े होते हैं क्योंकि हमें वो चीज देखनी होती है पर्दे पर वो तिलिस वो जादू वो मैजिक बरकरार है और आने वाले कई और सौ सालों के लिए बरकरार रहेगा तो आज की शाम आज की जो इवनिंग है ये खास शाम जो है वो उसको सेलिब्रेट करने के लिए है और एक चीज है जिसको समझना बहुत जरूरी है कि इन चीजों को डॉक्यूमेंट करना लिखना पिरोना अक्षरों में ये बहुत मुश्किल होता है लेकिन ये पीड़ा अपने कंधों पर उठाया है भावना स्वामया जी ने मैं उनको फिल्मों की वजह से ही जानता हूं तो ये मेरा प्रिविलेज है मेरा ऑनर है कि आज ये किताब जो कि बाय द वे उनकी थर्टीन किताब है कई जगह इस नंबर को बहुत शुभ नहीं माना जाता लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि आज वो नोशन भी टूट जाएगा थर्टीन बहुत शुभ नंबर है क्योंकि ये भावना सोमाया जी की तेरहवीं किताब है और ये किताब डेडिकेटेड है उसी नशे के लिए उसी आदत के लिए जो सौ साल पुरानी आदत है Once upon a time in India, पहले तो बहुत बहुत congratulations भावना जी को इस किताब के लिए। और अगर हम world history देखें सिनेमा का और हिंदुस्तान के सिनेमा का history देखें तो दोनों करीब करीब parallel चले हैं लेकिन एक चीज जो बहुत अलग और मुख्तलिफ कर देती है इस चीज को हिंदुस्तानी सिनेमा को वो music है वो गाने हैं और जिस जिस journey पर आप लोग हमें ले गए हैं तो मैं अब ज़्यादा वक्त नहीं लूँगा क्योंकि जिस चीज़ के लिए हम यहाँ पे आए हैं उस चीज़ की बात करना बहुत ज़रूरी है तो स्टेज पे मैं बुलाना चाहूँगा जिन्होंने ये पीड़ा उठाया और आज सक्सेसफुली इस किताब के विमोचन के लिए हमें यहाँ पे बुलाया है भावना सोमाया जी प्लीज समझ में आया एकदम ऑर्डरी फोन है एक फिकी के पंचन में अमित जी के बोलने के बाद सुषमा स्वराज को बोलना था 
तो सुषमा जी स्टेज पर आई और उन्होंने माइक एडजस्ट किया और कहा कि ये इस तरह से माइक रखा गया है कि आफ्टर बिग बी नो बडी ऑफ हर हाइट कैन स्पीक आफ्टर टू थ्री बुक्स ऑन मिस्टर बच्चन नाउ आई हैव लर्न टू कॉपी सुषमा जी बिकॉज सुषमा जी टोल मी लेटर कि वो कहीं भी बोलने जाती है तो वो फॉरन ऑर्गेनाइजर को पूछ लेती है कि आपके पास चौकड़ी है और अगर नहीं है तो वो उनकी डिक्की में एक चौकड़ी लेकर चलती है तो वो बोलती है आपके पास नहीं है तो मेरे पास चौकड़ी है तो मैंने आज अपने घर से ये चौकड़ी नहीं लाई हूँ मगर मैंने द क्लब वालों को कहा था कि मेरे लिए एक चौकड़ी का बंदोबस्त कर दे ताकि जब मैं बात करूँ तो मैं आई कॉन्टैक्ट के साथ कर सकूँ फर्स्ट आई टू गेट अ फ्यू थैंक यूज आउट ऑफ द वे सिद्धार्थ हु वॉज द एंकर के साथ आई डू शो विच इज़ बीन गोइंग ऑन फॉर मोर देन सिक्स ईयर्स एंड वॉट वी टॉक बिफोर द रिकॉर्डिंग एंड आफ्टर द रिकॉर्डिंग कैन मेक अ ग्रेट शो बट इट विल नॉट बी अप्रोप्रिएट दिस वेन्यू द क्लब इज द मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट वेन्यू फॉर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ माई बुक बिकॉज सिनेमा इज अ ट्रेडिशनल एंड कंटेम्प्रेरी and the club is old world and modern at the same time if you take a walk down the swimming pool you will see three generations or sometimes two generation of fathers jumping into the swimming pool so thank you nishi and dinesh kanna for uh, being a part of this event i was very clear that i wanted to start the evening with the film heritage foundation film because so many of our classics and so many of our silent films have been ravaged with time destroyed by either natural disasters or due to our own negligence my friend shivendra singh dungarpur my friend shivendra singh dungarpur i got it right has been working on this since 2014 he is dedicated devoted and committed to the cause of conservation preservation restoration of moving images and it is a cause that the media needs to get sensitized to and give him prominence without preservation there is no documentation there is no research there are no books there is no recall and there is no nostalgia if parthiv gohil and mansi gohil who are like my family have been able to take us down this musical journey of the last 100 years in 5 minutes it is because the tunes and the lyrics are accessible i also have to thank raindrop media rohini ayer who came to me when she was just 16 years old she walked into my cabin and said i think i'm going to make a great journalist and i didn't look at her cv and give her a job today no movie is complete without the drop of the rain and also she has helped in this event coming to the occasion the reason we are all here out of all the performing arts cinema is the most sensitive and the most effective medium cinema has the power to transform our lives to transform our mindsets human life is mortal but cinema is timeless it told us stories yesterday it tells us stories today and it will tell us stories tomorrow stories of romance stories of relationships stories of friends stories of family my endeavor in compiling this book was to recreate images and motifs like the bioscope we used to watch in childhood trust me to find a publisher for this kind of a book was very difficult the question uh, i was asked was what are the current uh, controversies that are there in the book the focus is so much on controversies and current trends and everybody wants anecdotal how can my argument was that how can i if i am documenting milestones get into the side track of trivia i'm privileged that i found penguin random house who understood my point of view and respected the manuscript as it was 
it is their vision that they were able to package this book in a contemporary address to the younger generation peppered with dialogues from films and illustrations of posters. It is the publisher's solitary decision to have Mr. Bachchan on the cover. They were very clear that they wanted Amitabh Bachchan on the cover because he has the most outstanding body of work which started in 1969 in South Hindustani and it continues to 2016 with Pink and Piku. The conflict was which of Amitabh Bachchan's movies still should be put on the cover. They decided on Amar Akbar Anthony because in their words, it brings a smile to their face. And this is so quintessential Manmohan Desai. It is mandatory that before we call the guest, the chief guest on the stage, you say a few words about him. But before that, looking at Parthiv and Mansi, I think I forgot to introduce them properly. Parthiv has performed uh, all over the world and is just coming from vibrant Gujarat. And in his words, he says from Modi to Bachchan, Mansi dons many hats. She is a singer, she's a theater actress, she's a cinema artist, she is uh, a young mother uh, who's delivered a baby just two months ago. And now to our chief guest. The media has exhausted adjectives to introduce him, so I'm going to do a little recap where once upon a time in India, when I was a cub reporter in 1978, Amitabh Bachchan was not talking to the media and he was a superstar. In 1989, when I launched a magazine, Amitabh Bachchan was still not talking to the media and was still a superstar. In 2000, I edited a film weekly. He was talking to the media. He was still a superstar. In 2009, I joined a radio channel. He was, cinema had changed. Two generation of actors had come. There was debate about what kind of actors are going to fit in. Amitabh Bachchan was still a megastar. Today, it is 2016, he's still playing center stage, still making us laugh and cry with films like Piku, Pink, and many more. I welcome Mr. Bachchan to come on stage and say whatever he thinks. موسیقی
pages of the film about uh, preservation and conservation and restoration. And I feel, uh, I've been talking to Shivendra, that my book is associated with that, that unless you preserve and unless you restore, then you're not able to otherwise document it. Research. Like I had so many uh, hardships in collecting things from the past. And you are somebody who has always felt very passionately about this, spoken eloquently about this. I just felt that um, in India we don't have the habit of any kind of documentation. And a lot of our valued heritage has been lost or is getting lost every day. Um, I'm really thankful to Shivain for uh, initiating the heritage concept. Uh, I was there for the inauguration when we introduced uh, the institution that is now going to be looking after the heritage of films. And I have volunteered to work in this course and uh, Shivain any time as always. Uh, when you shall need my services, I shall always be there. But really, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have Bhavna put all the thoughts together. The generations to come will, will want to know what happened in the early years. And uh, there really is no reference point for it. And I think that uh, for somebody like her to put across the 100 years of cinema in the form of a book which it's not like reading a book. It's more uh, interesting to to watch it, to go through it in a very fun way. And I think that's a very novel idea to keep the audiences and the readers attracted to something like this. So I compliment you, Bhavna, for that. I also feel that um, in the years to come, uh, both Shivan and you should join up and uh, uh, make many more such uh, examples of our heritage. It was heartbreaking to see what we saw in the film of how films are being destroyed. We used to joke um, during the time when we used to work with film, now of course we work with digital, that uh, every time um, a take went wrong, we used to joke that whatever film used to be left over at that point of time, but uh, can you imagine the amount of valuable footage that has gone into that uh, escapade? So thank you, Shivin. Thank you, Bhavna, for putting all this together. And anytime you need any further help to either propagate or to work towards its heritage, I shall always be there. Thank you. Movie watching habits has got to do a lot with uh, your childhood memories. How you were exposed to cinema, for example, uh, we used to have uh, holidays on Thursdays and my mother used to say uh, that if you finish your homework on time then your father and I are going to take you for a movie. And my sister and I would finish our homework, we would pack our school bag and we would be ready to go for a film. Most of the time joined by my nephews and nieces, a car full of people. My mother would pack homemade snacks wrapped in her cloth bag which was in the dark distributed to us children because buying the popcorns was expensive for so many children. What are your uh, memories of childhood? How were you exposed to films? How did you watch them? I've always been curious to know. I was born and brought up in Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. And in Allahabad, uh, the capital cinema was the very prominent uh, theater where we used to go and watch films. Um, in our time, parents used to go and wet the film before children were allowed to go and see it. So, whatever film came out and we wanted to go and see it, we wanted to go and see it. We wanted to see it first. We wanted to see it for the children. After that, we had to go and see it. In the capital theatre, there was probably in Allahabad. And its uniqueness was that it was a cinema theatre, but it was also a regular theatre. It was also a regular theatre. उसके ऊपर स्टेज परफॉर्मेंसेस भी होती हैं ऐसा स्टेज बनाया हुआ था और कई बार वहाँ पर हमने पृथ्वी राज कपूर और उनकी जो पृथ्वी थिएटर्स ग्रुप था उनका वहाँ पर हमने उनके प्लेस देखे और लॉरेन और हार्डी की एक फिल्म थी द फ्लाइंग ड्यूसेस वो मेरी पहली फिल्म थी और उसके बाद जितनी भी ये सिंड्रेला और 
लिटिल रेड राइडिंग हो जिस तरह की जो फिल्में आती थी डिजनी की वो देखने जाते थे हिंदी फिल्म शायद जो पहली देखी थी वो शायद जागृति थी बहुत ही पुरानी फिल्म थी बच्चों के ऊपर एक फिल्म बनी थी और बाद में कई सालों के बाद इलाहाबाद में पहला एयर कंडीशन थिएटर बना इसका नाम था निरंजन और हम लोग वहाँ देखने गए थे एक फिल्म जिसमें दिलीप साहब थे और देवानंद साहब It is very strange that you remember both the films, but of course you have a great memory. I have been trying to think which was the first film I saw, and I have still not been able to recall. I am looking always for images where I will catch the memory of that film, but it doesn't come back. But I have memories associated with every film I have watched. For example, I remember that Amar Akbar Anthony. I saw it with all my college friends who are sitting there. I remember I saw Diwar with my sister in Badal Bijli. and the lights had gone out and uh, they said that we don't know when the lights will come back this was happening in the climax scene when nirupa roy is you are on her lap and nobody moved and we were all so patient and accustomed to the lights going out waiting enjoying the film coming out and how things have changed now you go to the multiplexes it's air conditioned the popcorns are expensive but nobody feels a pinch somehow the spending habits have changed कई बार रेडियो के इंटरव्यू के दौरान सिद्धार्थ मुझे पूछते हैं कि आपका सबसे फेवरेट दर्शक कौन सा है विच इज द बेस्ट मुझे सिनेमा का सबसे फेवरेट दर्शक कौन सा है विच इज द डेड दैट आई वैल्यू द मोस्ट माय फेवरेट डेड इज द फिफ्टीज बिकॉज इट अशर्ड न्यू वेव सिनेमा ग्रेट फिल्म मेकर्स एंड ग्रेट म्यूजिक and my second favorite is the 70s because i was uh, finding my roots in journalism at that time and because i think the decade is very dramatic in writing in performances what are your favorite decades jitne bhi decades hain sab mere favorites sabse zyada ek to bata do ye bahut mushkil hai kehna aapne jaise kaha ki jo 50 का दशक था उस समय तो हम लोग को इजाज़त मिल रही थी कि फिल्में जा करके देखें तो वो बहुत ही एक आश्चर्यजनक चीज़ होती थी निरंजन सिनेमा जिस जिसकी हमने अभी चर्चा की वो इसलिए याद है और वो फिल्म इसलिए याद है क्योंकि एयर कंडीशन थिएटर जो था वो एक आविष्कार था बहुत ही अद्भुत लगता था यार एक सिनेमाघर जो है वो एयर कंडीशन हो सकता है तो वो याद हमारे साथ थी और रुपये पैसों की बात की तो हम लोग तो सामने जो तो लकड़ी के बेंच होते थे उस पर बैठते थे आठ हंड्रेड टिकट होता था उसका क्योंकि आज के ज़माने में पचास पैसे हैं और ऐसे हम लोग फिल्में देखते थे और हर दशक में हम हमें कुछ ना कुछ एक नया देखने को मिला नए कलाकार देखने को मिले नया संगीत नए निर्माता निर्देशक ये कहना कि ये दशक पहले दशक से ज़्यादा बेहतर था ये कहीं ना कहीं अत्याचार होगा बहुत क्योंकि हर दशक में कोई ना कोई एक एक हाँ कुछ कुछ नया लाया है नए कलाकारों को पेश किया है और आज भले ही हम बैठ करके यहाँ कह सकें कि जो 50 का दशक था जो साठ का दशक था वो अच्छा था लेकिन आज से 10-20 साल बाद लोग कहेंगे कि आज का दशक जो है बहुत सुंदर लगा आज का दशक तो बहुत स्पेशल है ही बिकॉज बहुत बेहतरीन फिल्में बन रही है रियलिस्टिक फिल्में बन रही है बहुत रियलिस्टिक परफॉर्मेंसेस किए जा रहे हैं मिसाल के तौर पे सिर्फ आपकी फिल्म की भी बात करें तो पिकू का जो आपका कैरेक्टर है और जो सब्जेक्ट है ये हम सोच भी नहीं सकते हैं कि सिर्फ कॉन्स्टिपेशन पर एक फिल्म बन सकती है या पिंक में इट इज़ द फर्स्ट टाइम इन हिंदी सिनेमा द वर्ड वर्जनिटी इज ओके a reference is being made to virginity otherwise if a hindi film heroine has to be completely pure agree meeta ye zyada zyada kehte hain uske paon bhari ho gaye but yes uh, uh, both piku and pink were uh, were in a way a great revelation i felt piku because it brought in uh, a film which had really no story just a relationship between a uh, daughter and a father and there was a great amount of identification 
uh, with the daughters of the world, in fact, particularly in India, because many of the daughters who saw the film um, for the first time invited their parents and their fathers to come along to see it again because they identified with that relationship. Pink, of course, um, the issue was so strong and so valuable and so pertinent in today's times that it was something that needed to be said and it had to be said in as powerful a manner as possible. I'm really very grateful to uh, Shruti Sarkar and uh, Anirudh and uh, Ronnie Lai for making that film and even thinking about it. And thinking about it not so much in a way to preach the content, but I felt to just touch it very briefly and leave a lasting impression. Devising that last comment of the film, No Means No, was by itself uh, very debatable when we were discussing the script. Uh, it was felt by the writers and the directors at that time that in the final summation of the court scene, I would get up and make a long speech uh, which would encapsulate all that had happened in the film from the start to the end. But I felt that having said so much already, and, and, and all the lawyers that were arguing for and against had said so much that really wasn't needed. And because uh, Deepak Segal, who was the character in the film, was hesitant in the beginning because of his bipolar condition uh, to make any kind of argument in court, he would stand up and say, uh, no questioning, Your Honor, or no, Your Honor. I felt if we played on the word no, it would just fall in line with the character. And then the writers and us thought that why can't he just work on the word no? And I thought that that was a brilliant piece of writing by Videsh Shah when he discovered this sentence. And the way he put it that when a woman says no, you need to stop. And it can be anybody, your friend, your partner, your, your sex worker even your own wife. And I thought that that was extremely powerful. And I'm so happy to have been associated with a film of this nature. Because in many ways, it almost became um, revolutionary. The tagline became the, the tagline of the nation. And uh, in some of our interviews that we did during the promotion of the film um, with the media, there were at least two instances where uh, the lady interviewer actually broke down in tears while she was interviewing us. That's how it affected many people, and many women. We still have a long way to go and we hear of some uh, incredibly hideous uh, incidents that keep happening in our country. And I do pray and hope that they stop. And I do hope and pray that films like Pink will bring in some sense into these terrible incidents that keep happening. It's been 47 years and you're still facing the outlights. How are you feeling? What are the changes you see on the sets, off the sets, in the audience? Yeah. A couple of technical things have changed. Uh, there's no longer film, so I don't know whether we should start referring to the industry as a film industry because we're not using film anymore. It's all digital. Uh, that's the difference. With, with that difference, um, a lot of the making procedure has changed. Uh, for me as an artist, uh, we were so conscious uh, in our earlier years uh, of not wasting film because it was the most expensive product uh, uh, in the costing of the film. And so every time we went up to give a shot, we were terribly, terribly conscious that we have to finish it in one take or either we're going to get thrown out of the film or we're never going to get another chance. So having lived with that kind of phenomena and the danger that you have to get it right uh, the very first time was kind of limiting us in case we wanted to improve in the next take. We, we never got an opportunity. Many a times, uh, for example, working with the Rishida, Rishikesh Mukherjee, I used to tell them, Rishida, can I... Uh, have another take. He said, no, no, this take is very good. I said, please, Dada, take another take. 
ठीक है टेक करो इसका पैसा तुम देना तो दीज आर सम ऑफ द लिमिटेशंस दैट वी लिव विद बट नाउ इट्स डिजिटल द कैमरा डजंट स्टॉप एंड द प्रोड्यूसर डजंट केयर इफ इट डजंट स्टॉप बिकॉज़ इट्स जस्ट लिमिटलेस and we use this to great effect in the film pink and i keep referring to that because the entire courtroom scene was shot with seven digital cameras and there were you know 20 30 pages of scenes that just went on endlessly without stopping or without cutting but each camera was catching some character some actor that was involved in the scene so it's, it's not like you went said your lines and then went back to your vanity van or your makeup room and didn't bother about what was what was happening you did your shot and you were still involved in the scene because even when you were walking back to your chair in the set you were being followed by the camera and your reactions were being noted uh, this was uh, something very revealing there was a lot of honesty in the way it happened uh, there was a lot of uh, concentrated interest in what was going on normally what would happen that you would do a close up and go away and not bother uh with what your colleague was going to do or how he was going to perform or enact that scene if you had a, a double shot yes you are aware of it but sometimes when they're doing a close up you you're not there but here we were in in the world of digital cinema absolutely involved in everybody every person that was sitting in the seats even though he wasn't saying it we would be having the liberty to notice it and prepare ourselves for what was going to come next as naturally as possible so that was the technical difference the other thing that we notice now is uh, many women on set uh, in my time there were just two the leading lady and her mother as a chaperone but now you have uh, almost 50% of the workforce and that is really credit the workforce all managed by young girls whether it is uh, in production whether it is in the camera department whether it is in the continuity department they are just looking after everything and it's just wonderful to see the kind of dedication and devotion that they put in um we rely a lot on them because for some reason we feel that the ladies are never going to make a mistake and uh, it works out really yes they are very efficient and i really love the moment when i'm on set because i just feel free to be able to say my lines and be involved in the scene and not worry about what my continuity is so what i should be wearing or which button of my jacket is open in the previous shot uh, these are things that we have to look after ourselves in my in my time but now uh, there are wonderful ladies that come around and uh, do this for you but really want to compliment that entire atmosphere um but look at not just the workforce but look at the women writers and directors who have come forward and done so brilliantly well in the last 2 uh, or 3 years 4 or 5 years we've had some very prominent directors um and we've had uh, excellent writers and i hope that this continues because uh, really we we need them to come forward and tell the men that they are better than them that is great insight into what was happening in cinema in the olden days and what is happening now on the sets uh, mr bachan just mentioned about uh, watching a film on a bench and his ticket was 8 hours or something i remember my mother in uh, when she was in karachi there used to be janana shows and i think they were carrying the children with them free and they would sit on a small bench and maybe it was 20 paise or something so after so many years when bandit queen was released there was a lady show for the first time so it was something that happened after the tapes in a recent interview you said ke i don't know so much about cinema my wife knows more than me uh today discussing the digital observations about how the whole scenario has to be there and so many other new insights i don't think that is true at all no it is i mean you just survive for 47 years like that only 
No, somebody wrote things for me. Somebody asked me to wear something. Somebody told me, walk here, say these lines here. I just followed like a robot and I was lucky. But, uh, but Jay has a lot of, uh, lot of insights into a film, into the story, into the making. Um, I miss the point many a times. And, uh, I, that's why I said what I said. We are lucky to have Mr. Bachchan here share his observations on his own cinema and about the changing cinema, about the changing decades. I had promised him that I was going to set him free before quarter to eight. And I think I have kept my promise. Thank you. While we were talking about cinema and stories and, and why this photograph was there on the front page uh, and my lack of knowledge about assessing what a story and a, and a film is going to be like, when Manmohan Desai came to me and said, I'm going to make a story called Amar Akbar Anthony, I said, Man, you are crazy. Who will see this picture whose name is picture jiska naam hai, Amar Akbar Anthony? In an era when films like Badi Bahan, Choti Bahu, this kind of title of film came out. There was Amar Akbar Anthony. I said, you are crazy. Who will see this picture? He abused me and said, you watch what happens. And then, to our horror, we had the opening scene of the film where three brothers are lying in hospital and one tube is going from each one of their veins into one lady. I said, Man, this is, this is atrocious. This is, this is not permissible in medical history. Forget cinema. And you know, when the film was released, when this shot appeared in the opening sequence, there was huge applause in the audience. So, obviously, my knowledge of cinema is useless, and Manmohan Desai was much better. Tell us about this egg scene because it's my book cover. So we yeah, would like to This was one of the atrocities that he asked me to do. Uh, you know, that you have to get out of the egg. I said, okay, what are you doing? Yeah, because the the girl was Christian and. It was Easter, and um, he made me wear something which was very um, Christian looking and uh, made me do all kinds of things and asked me to re recite some lines. I used to just fool around with the English language, uh, uh, the whole country of the sister, because yeah, there is a story it's a lot of rubbish. Spoken, but, you know, right? he heard me saying it someday and he said, hey, put this in the song. That was another moment of madness, but you know. That was what my mom decided was. He, he was a genius, truly. Javed Akhtar once said about Amitabh Bachchan that asal zindagi mein unki koi bhi ideology kyu na ho, unki jo bhi rai ho, magar ek baar wo set par aate hai, aap unke haath mein talwar do, chaku do, gun do, sitar do, kuch bhi do, he will do it with conviction. And that is why he came out of an egg. And he made us laugh and cry. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv. Thank you.